Hi everybody, welcome back to Twisted Stitches. My name is Tammy, I am your host of Twisted Stitches. Thank you so much for coming back. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And if you don't celebrate, I hope you had a wonderful Thursday. I haven't been on here for a little bit. Um, I've been a little bit under the weather. You know, I have scoliosis and I have Harrington rods since 1982 and I have arthritis and things. And when that flares and I start feeling a little bit bad, uh, I don't really feel like doing much. So, and I've been a little bit busy doing some things like babysitting my granddaughter and doing a job. I had a job today to do. So I detailed a bike. So I'm a little bit tired right now and it is a little bit late. Today is Wednesday, December 4th and it is like almost nine o'clock at night. But I wanted to film and I wanted to get something out there because I haven't talked to you guys in so long. And I want you to know how much I appreciate each and every one of you. I am so thankful. I can't believe you guys are here. I can't believe you guys watch me. I feel so humbled. And I, I, I just want to thank you once again for subscribing and watching my videos. It means the world to me. You don't even know how much it means to me. I can't even, exp I can't describe it. And I feel so, I don't know, I don't know. What, what do you say? How do you say it? I don't know. I don't, the words can't come to me, but I, I just want you to know how thankful I am to all of you. And um, so let's get on with it. Let's just stop, stop. So I do have a couple of FOs, not a lot, and I have one whip and I got tagged in that crafty tag thingy majiggy that everybody is doing that I finally got tagged. Thank you, Neva from Manic Mama. Go look at her uh, her YouTube. She's new like I am. She's trying to build up and do her thingy. So she's a she's she's a sweetheart. And I thank you so much. Thank you for tagging me. I've never been tagged before. I feel like like woohoo! I've been tagged. Yeah. So let me start with a whip that I'm currently working on. Remember I was telling you about that gumdrop yarn? Here, I'll refresh your memory. The Red Heart Gumdrop. I bought this stuff at Hirschner's for $1.69 a skein. And I think it has, I don't want to put on my glasses right now. I'm sorry. Um, well, I'll put them on. Never mind. Put them on. I just didn't want to take the time because I don't want the video to be way, way long. I'll try to make it short, sweet, and to the point, guys. Uh, this has 204 yards. And it's a four weight. It's a number four weight. It is, it feels just like Karen Simply Soft. And I'm gonna show you, it works up just like Karen Simply Soft. It has that little bit of splitty, you know, you do have to kind of keep an eye on it because once in a while you'll split a stitch for sure. But look at how cute this is. Oh my gosh. I think this is adorable. This is, this yarn is just awesome for kids. I know that my granddaughters are going to love, this is going to be a hat, you know, stitch it up, uh, ribbed type, uh, slouchy slash beanie hat, you know, you could fold up the brim. I'm just making them some simple hats, cowls, and uh, I'm going to try to make them the little like maybe fingerless mitts, gloves or whatever you call them, and have it for Christmas time. I have three more granddaughters to make for so I got to get to cracking and I haven't been working very hard on it but so that is my whip uh currently I believe that's my only whip that I have this was not this isn't a whip or a finished object this was something I did I finished this in August this was one of my other sweaters that I had made this one was made with Premier's Cotton Fair this is 317 yard ball and it has 317 yards and it's like a 50 50 blend cotton acrylic something like that it's a two weight and this is the color moss i had bought this during the summertime michaels had it online a three pack of the balls of yarn for 
something stupid like six dollars so i was like wow two dollars each and i bought two bags so it was like twelve dollars and guess what i only went through two and a half balls of yarn to make this and this is i would consider it an extra large because it came out well i can wear i can wear between a woman's large and like a extra large type shirt and that's what i like to wear and this sits really comfortably so if you get that and you're say approximately large to extra large size you only need about three balls to make something like this you know uh if you had longer sleeves you would probably need three to three and a half balls just to make sure you had enough that's just off you know off the top of my head off the cuff anyway so i finished this hat that i was working on for my boyfriend excuse me i'm getting like a little cold going on or something and uh, this is the one that I was making with the Ferris wheel yarn in the morning Java color way. And it worked up really nicely. The only little glitch that I have with this hat is I was basically putting around his head to see if it was going to be right. Even though I had measured his head and I was measuring as I was going along, um, I was just double checking you know he's there I might as well see if it goes on and fits him right instead of just winging it so I put it on and he goes oh that feels a little bit snug before I'd stitched it up he goes it feels a little bit snug can you put like an extra row or two in there I don't like my hats too snug against my better judgment I did I put in like two extra rows I stitched it up he put it on and now it fits it doesn't look really bulky on him but it's loose so like when he's riding his motorcycle it's not snug and it feels like it's gonna blow away he actually does try to like tuck it down a little bit to keep it from blowing away I have a question for those of you who may not who may know you know like if you sew something and it's ends up being a little too big you can like pinch off a seam sew up the seam and then just get rid of the excess fabric can I do something like that with this hat can I put in a new like slip stitch or something like that right along here to snug this up a little bit for him and then maybe even get rid of the excess bulkiness or and as long as it's stitched really tight it shouldn't come apart right I'm, I don't know so if you know please let me know in the comment section because I really don't know I may just have to make him a new hat and this one he could just wear when he's not on his motorcycle and make him one that's the size I was originally gonna make him so that's that this came out really cute though I like it I love this color and as you can see if you can tell it's already starting to get dirty he's actually worn this quite a bit in this last about week and a half since it was finished so something I have been working on I decided this year I was gonna make a couple Christmas ornaments now I went on YouTube because I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head and I just searched you know Christmas ornaments and I found a guy now I wrote him down where is he his name is I am so sorry look at me looking for him oh, <laughs> oh. crouton crafts I'm gonna say crouton I don't know if he says it like crouton crafts it's c-r-o-u-t-o-n crouton for me anyway so uh, one of the things he has is the Christmas wreath ornaments and so I made up a couple of these I've actually made up more of these so I made up these this was made with the Hobby Lobby I love this yarn metallic and this was with the the gold and like antique white and red with gold and then I did some French knots for the little berries and then you just you know incorporate that you just pull it up and then do a little knot to tie it off I used he was using milk rings to crochet around but I don't drink enough milk to have that many milk rings so I went and bought uh, pipe cleaners you know little pipe cleaners and I just make a circle and I just crochet around that it's not really a sturdy thing but it's just to go on your tree or to give somebody as a gift or something so I made that one this one here is the metallic also 
but it's made with the white and the silver, and then that's the green metallic. Oops, excuse me. Sorry about that. I don't want it to get blown out. It seems like this blows out for me every time I do this. And then red metallic for the little French knots to make the little berries. And then this one here I made in blue metallic, white, and the white metallic with the green metallic berries. And then I went with the traditional colors. And this isn't metallic. This is, and I made it a little bit bigger. I added an extra row or round on it. And this one here, I made it like that. And I think I like this one. Uh, to me, this just reminds me of an old fashioned Christmas. And it's not metallic, it's the Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn, just the regular. This is a like antique white. This is like cranberry color. And this was like a forest green, something like that. I'm sorry, I didn't write them all down. I had showed you the the yarns in a previous video and I described them all in that video. So if you want, you can go back and take a look at it if you want to. But this was made with that one. I like this one. And then he had another tutorial and it was um, simple crochet ornaments. And they are, they really are cute. So they're just little, they're like stuffed. He uses a bunch of the yarn he just leaves lots of strands hanging and then stuffs it like that i actually bought some fiber fill and instead of making big huge like uh, octopus strands i just put a little bit of fiber fill in here but basically you just do double crochets around and around but instead of going on the top of the stitch you go in between the stitches see that came out really cute and then you single crochet stitch it shut but like I said, and then I made this one with the metallic. I've only made two of these because I don't know why. I just only made two of these so far, but I'm going to make some more. But I just wanted to show you guys. This is just a fun little project. These take about, well, it depends. Uh, sometimes if I'm just going at it, it only take me about 15, 20 minutes. But if I'm just you know, taking my time, not really just relaxing or whatever, it only it'll take you about half an hour you know that's tucking in all the ends and making the french knots and everything so that is it for my finished objects as of the as of today and my whips as of today now on to something that i purchased um if you all if, i don't know if all of you watch crochet rocks tracy at crochet rocks she was having a few giveaways and during her giveaways she had these little kits that had like a woody doll make like what are they amigurumi amigurumi is that how you say it dolls and so she was giving away and oh my god i wanted them so badly uh my grandkids love like you know different things uh frozen and uh, uh mickey mini hat mouse all that stuff so i was like i've never done little dolls or anything like that and I was like hey I want to try it out so but I couldn't find kits anywhere I was like we don't have that here she's in the UK and they had them in her like I think she got them at her like dollar type store her version of a dollar store or something of the sort and it was real cheap it was only like five bucks or something like that I, I don't know go you can go watch her video and you can see it's in a giveaway but you can still watch the video I'm sure so anyway, I was just kind of bummed about it. But then, let me see. Um, April with B Wowed had said, uh, she had done a small video and she had said that a friend of hers said at Sam's Club that they had the kits that were similar to the ones that Tracy had. So I had to go see. I had to go find out. So I went to Sam's Club and guess what? They had these kits. Look at kits oh my god I can't believe it I am just like I don't know so this kit says that you it has enough stuff in here to do the Harry Potter and the Dobby but it, I guess it's supposed to have the patterns for um, like Haggard and Ron and oh, I'm having a brain fart 
the girl. Anyway, so anyway, so I got this and I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then I haven't even opened it because I was waiting to open it with you guys. See, I didn't open it yet. Hold on. Please, Lord, let me do this without cutting off a finger or something. Come on. Hold on. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm like an idiot. Oh. Come on. Ah, there it goes. Yeah, it's just a big I was reading on this box, and it says it has a wand crochet hook. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What? A wand crochet hook? Oh, okay. Yeah, it does. Look at it. Let me get it out. Let me get it out. Let me get it out. It is so cute. Now, I'm not like a ginormous Harry Potter fan or anything. I watched the movies. Oh, my God. This is so adorable. It's plastic. Oh, my God. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this little crochet hook. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to put it in, like, my cup that I carry my crochet that I keep my crochet hooks in look at that that's so cute that's adorable oh my god I don't think it's very I don't think it'll work very well I wouldn't use it that way but it's it just I this is adorable this is just perfect so anyway this kit comes with like a book let me see Harry Potter crochet uh contents it has about the kid uh project one harry potter hermione granger hermione that's who it was ron weasley student robe and scarf doby the house elf a uh, hagrid norbert the dragon uh dumbledore dumbledore minerva mcdonnell i'm sorry if i'm just butchering these and you're like harry potter fans and you're like oh my god you can't see it right because that's what i do <laughs> so i can't sorry uh the sorting hat voldemort uh serious serious snape Ginny weasley and hedwig so i guess i can make all these oh <gasps> you can look you can make the little owl you can make the little owl. I don't want to give things away and get dinged for that. <gasps> oh my God. You can make the little broom. Look at this. This is so good. Okay, this kit is at, I'm in Spring Hill, Florida, and this was in my Brooksville, Florida Sam's Club. And April at Be Wowed Crochet had said that her friend was up north, I think like in Pennsylvania or something like that. So they may be, look, Ginny Weasley. Oh my gosh. It comes with enough yarn and project stuff to do uh, just Dobie and Harry Potter. But this has <gasps> Snape. These are so cute. I don't know how big they are. I don't know how to look at all the parts. It's so cute. I don't know how large they're going to be. Let's see. Hold on, let me do this. They have a picture. So there's a picture with somebody's hands. So that would be the size of the head. What does that look like? About two inch head? So it's probably seven inch, eight inch doll or something like that when it's all done with. And the yarn that comes with it. Ah, stop, 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 stop. I'm not going to get too into detail because I have to show you. It looks like it is a three-weight yarn. Can you see that? Can you see the... I don't want to pull it all apart. Sorry, guys. But that looks like it's about a three-weight yarn. So I'm wondering if you go and buy like a four-weight yarn, if the you could just make these dolls a little bit bigger. You know, if they're, say, they are about six to eight inches if you get a bigger or a thicker yarn you could probably make these a little bit bigger this is adorable so this is awesome this was $14.98 at my sam's club so i love this and then i got a frosty the snowman kit and it makes frosty and karen and then it makes 
all of those in the back there. This kit was also $14.98. Now, I've never done these, so. And then look at this. Now, this I know I have to make for all my grandkids because all my granddaughters love Frozen. So this kit comes with enough to do Elsa and Anna in the kit, these two. But in the little book, it shows how to make all them. Look at that. That is adorable. These are freaking, this was only $9.98 for the Frozen. Now these were the only three kits that I saw. And I had to get them. I had to get them. I had, There was no ifs, ands, or buts. I was buying these. I didn't care if I had to sell my blood and then come back and buy them. I was buying them. So I did it. So anyway, those were my acquisitions as of now. Um, Hirschner's did suck me in a little tiny bit for Black Friday and for Cyber Monday. They had sales. They had the Red Heart with Love. No, not the Red Heart with Love. The Red Heart Fashion Soft, which I do have some and I showed you in a previous video. And they had it again, the three packs for $5.00. And then they also had the Super Saver for $5. And they had the this gumdrop still at, I think, $1.69. And it was free shipping and 20% off. So I bought some more. And I also bought, on Cyber Monday, I bought um, some of their yarn. I'm going to try out some of their brand yarn. I want to make some blankets. I want to start making some blankets. And this particular cakes of yarn... I think we'll make gorgeous blankets. So I'll show you guys when they come in. I'll definitely let you know how it feels and what it looks like and how much yardage is on the skeins and everything. But I got them for a good deal, so I had to do it. Okay, now before it gets too late, let me do... I think I should be able to move through this pretty quickly. I will try not to babble too much. Bear with me. Now, if you don't want to hear me talk about the... Um, was it the crafty yarn tag or something? You can stop and go now. And I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me and looking at some of the stuff that I that I found and some things. Remember, you can go to Sam's Club for that if you're somebody who does amigurumi. I think these are cute. I can't do that with this one. These are like adorable kits. And they even include the crochet hook. And this crochet hook, can you see that? Looks like a normal crochet hook. Forgive me for not opening it all up. I don't want to take the time to do all that. You guys can tell what's in there. You can see. So I did want to open the Harry Potter because when I saw about this little thing, I was hoping this was going to be like a, um, um, a wood, but it's not. It's just plastic. It's, it bends. See? Just plastic. Like I said, I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to put it in my crochet hook cup and... Cause it's cute it's just adorable i don't know i like it okay so on to the tag let me see it says what is my go-to craft for the holidays i wrote these out and i did them in like shorthand and now i can't read my own writing uh what is my go-to craft method for the holidays um well, if, 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 if we're talking about my go-to craft, it's going to be crochet. I don't really knit, and I don't knit well, so it's definitely going to be crochet. So that's that's pretty good there. Uh, number two, do um, am I giving out basically handmade or store-bought gifts or both? This year it will be both because, as you saw, I'm making some hats and um, fingerless gloves and cowls for my granddaughters. But I'm kind of like one of those people that once I make it, I want to give it to the person right away. Like this hat. I could have hung on to this and gave it to him for Christmas time. But no, I made it and gave it to him right away. I just like to see people use the stuff I make. That's what I get a kick out of. I like when somebody takes something, wears it, and then they really appreciate it and they really like it. So uh, usually it's just bought gifts from the store. So that's what I do. Uh, who is the most craft worthy, craft worthy person in my life and why? 
The most craft-worthy person that I'm going to go with are my grandbabies. They, my three-year-old is wearing a hat right now that I, it was a practice hat. It was kind of like, I just wanted to see how it was going to come out. And I wasn't the happiest with the way it came out, but she loves it and she wears it. So, and then my youngest granddaughter has a cardigan, that cardigan that I made her. She wears it. She loves it. I think I think it's the grands. They really, the little ones, they really get a kick out of, my grandma made this for me and I'm wearing it. So I, I believe, I'm going to say my granddaughters. Um, I believe my kids appreciate it, but I don't think they would wear it as much as my grandkids do. Uh, a luxury crafting item on my wish list. Don't hold back. The only thing that I am really wanting to get very, very, very badly is a Stanwood large, like the jumbo uh, yarn ball winder, um, because I want to take all my balls, <laughs> all my balls, I want to take all my skeins of yarn and turn them into cakes so I can display them a little bit neater and maybe put them in totes or anything a little bit neater and it'd be easier to stack cakes instead of the little and then I have a lot of like um, half used skeins of yarn that I want to cake up and then have available and easier to use then so that's what I'm that's my biggest thing I want a Stanwood jumbo yarn ball winder describe a crafty holiday tradition I do every year well I don't do it every year but I used to when the kids were younger and uh, me and my sister used to get together and do a lot of baking I like to bake I really enjoy baking and making like fudge and things like that so every year we kind of did something like that so that's what that's my kind of go-to thing my holiday decor style well since my kids are grown I don't really decorate that much uh, with my problems with my back it's very tiring I have a hard enough time keeping up on the few things that I do, keeping up around the house, and then finding time for myself and crochet and trying to make everything kind of come together. Because when you're in chronic pain, you kind of feel overwhelmed because you can't stand up and do dishes in one shot. You have to take breaks. You can't go clean your bathroom in one shot. I have to clean the bathtub for a little bit and then if my back starts hurting I gotta take a break and let it rest and then go back to it so it, it's it's kind of time consuming so I don't now that I'm older and the kids are grown I don't really decorate anymore but I did I did used to kind of just do traditional anything went on the tree if the kids made it it went on the tree I wasn't one of those oh it's got to be just silver and gold or it has to just be that's that was my 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 thing okay back to it back to it uh, what is my largest, most complicated item that I have made for the holidays? What was it and how long did it take to complete? My, um, the, the thing that took me the longest and was the most cumbersome for me was my very first blanket that I was making for my daughter. When I taught myself to crochet, I did by going to the library, getting a book and practicing. So just learning how to do a double crochet, do a single crochet, learning how to find the stitch by looking at a book and trying to look at the pictures and how they, it was like a cartoon illustrated type. It wasn't even like regular photograph pictures. It was literally like a drawn picture of a crochet hook going into the stitch. And there was a lot of frustration and it took me a long time to finally even understand how to do the stitch and then I made her a blanket that was um, a shell stitch blanket where you know it's not the stacking shells the odd shells like almost like a Catherine wheel and um, it took me forever because I was so frustrated and I was so tired and I kept putting it away and then coming back to it and putting it away come back to it. it actually took me a couple years to finish that blanket so sorry to say sad to say uh, but I did give it to her for Christmas one year, so that was a Christmas gift that she got from me after many years. But that was, that was the worst. Now things, of course. And then with YouTube, if I'm stuck on something, I can look it up and bam, just like that, I am unstuck. 
Whereas, you know, in the past it was a lot different. So that's why. Um, holiday crafting fail. Um, my sister and I, like I said, we used to do a lot of baking. And I would give baking away. <laughs> One time we were making fudge. And I was like, let's do something different. Let's, we like mint. I like like minty chocolate things. And I was like, let's make instead, let's keep the fudge fudge, but let's make like an icing for it and let's make it minty. And we were all like, yeah, we got the, the powdered sugar and I had peppermint uh, extract and all this other stuff. And I sat and whipped up this frosting for the, uh, for the fudge. And no lie, it tasted like toothpaste. It was so disgusting. We took a bite and we were like, this tastes like toothpaste. And it was just, I, if you were there, we were dying laughing. Because at this point, we had been up for quite a long time. It was like in the middle of the night that we were finishing everything up. We were on a sugar high from, like, you would not believe. And so we just started, like... You can't catch your breath laughing. I don't know. It, it's funny. Now that I think back at it, you guys are probably like, yeah, okay, that was cute. But oh my God. It just was like I took a bite and I was like, oh my God, this is toothpaste. <laughs> that was a fail. So that didn't go over. Anyway. Uh, the best crafty gift I've ever received. <sighs> well... When it comes to crafty gifts, I think any mother will tell you anything your child made you is the best gift you ever get. I still have many of the things that my children made. I have a magnet on my fridge that my son made in like second grade that has a fish on it and has his name on it. And I still have it. And my grandkids are like, what is that, grandma? I'm like, your daddy made that. I still have a little box that my daughter made me out of uh, popsicle sticks. You know, you, you, you can't beat it. You just cannot. It is the best thing in the world, and you will treasure that for the rest of your life. So that is the best. So there, I don't... That's, that's the best crafty gift I've gotten. Ah, show my favorite holiday mug and show that mug shot. All right. It is just my favorite mug in general. Right here, it's, there's nothing in it right now, but this is my tea mug because this mug holds two cups of tea. And the reason I don't have tea in it right now is because I am a finicky tea drinker. I like my tea super hot. I literally heat my tea up and get my tea back to boiling right before I drink it. So I put my tea bags in, I brew it for like five, six minutes, then I actually put it back in the microwave and I warm it up until it's almost to a boil again. So it's super hot. I love my tea super hot. So this is it. It's a little snowman. I got it at Walmart two years ago. And it's like perfect size. So I use this all the time. Even in the dead of summer, I use this. Now I do somewhere, and I'm going to have to look for them. I have these mugs that I used to use with my kids when they were little. I got them from Denny's. And they were, um, they have like little, one has a little snowman on it. And when you put the hot water in it and you make hot chocolate or something, the snowman melts and it says something like, I would have preferred something cold. And then I have one that has a reindeer that's sad. And then when you put the hot in it, the reindeer gets glad and has a red nose and some other, I have a set of four. I have them packed away somewhere because I haven't taken them out in many years. But I do believe I'm going to find them and I'm going to pass them on to my daughter because I think that she'll appreciate them because she used to like uh, every year was always, are we going to have hot chocolate in the, in, the, in the mugs? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it. So I think I'm going to pass them to her. Uh, I think it's time. So anyway, uh, I don't want to, I'm a little bit long, just 35 minutes. Sorry, guys. I tried to make it a little bit short. I tried to... Speed it up, but I can't speed it up. I'm like losing my mind. Sorry, guys. Ah, I have to tag people. When I started thinking about tagging people, uh, it seems like the people who are in our little crochet group, you know, when you, you talk about Granny D or you talk about um, 
Manic Mama or you talk about April at Be Wowed or I, I, the list goes on. You know, we're kind of like, you know, the, the newer type, I guess you could say, uh, people. Um, they seem to all have been tagged. So I have decided because I have been watching these two since I very first learned that YouTube had crochet tutorials and I was like, mind blown. Uh, the ch first two people that I ever subscribed to was uh, Glenda at Creative Grandma and uh, Bonnie Barker at Bonnie Bay Crochet. Bonnie is the one who taught me how to cable. I call her the cable queen because she knows and she will teach you. If you want to ever learn how to cable, she'll teach you and it'll be gorgeous and it's easy. So, um, and Glenda with her stitch of the week and she does her, she's so patient and she's so, um, so I don't have the tolerance to be as patient as she is. She's just excellent with her teaching and her videos come out great. you know, you should go, if you guys have never, I mean, you guys have got to know, uh, Bonnie, Bonnie Bay Crochet and Glenda. But those are the two I'm curious about with this um, craft tag because their crafts are just amazing. Have you ever seen Creative Grandma's stuff that she has? She just has amazing things. And I would just love to know, like, what is her... I would love her to show, like, her most accomplished thing that she's done. And the same with Bonnie Barker. I just, they're amazing women and they just do beautiful work. So that's the end of my video, guys. I know I babbled a little bit. I'm sorry. I tried to keep it a little bit short and sweet. I'm a babbler. I'm very sorry. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I probably, I don't know if I'll be back on before the weekend. I do have a box coming on Friday, but it is a busy weekend. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get on here until I'll save it though. I'll save it until I'm able to get back on here. Um, you guys have a awesome, awesome weekend and stay safe and have, take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.